Well, hello everybody from inside Fenway Park. Zach Hampel here. And normally I start these videos outside of stadiums, but today's actually been kind of a logistical mess up until this part. But anyway, really happy to be here. But unfortunately, despite the perfect weather, there's no batting practice as you can maybe kind of see behind me on the field, just a few players out there warming up. It's a 4, 10 p.m. game and teams sometimes don't hit if they're not playing a night game. So that's the situation for today. But yeah, I mean, what an awesome place. As I mentioned in the video yesterday, when they were not blasting music early on, it's just so peaceful. So let's see what we can do. Well, that was pretty cool and unexpected. I'm actually uh, on the phone right now. I don't even know who threw it. I think one of the Red Sox guys just randomly chucked this ball into the empty seat. So uh, I'm on the board. Yay, I don't even have my glove on. So that's a good sign. Well, that was a whole lot of fun, a fast-paced scavenger hunt for that baseball, but unfortunately, I came up on the short end of it, and evidently, I heard that Red Sox players love to aim for this seat. They chuck balls long distance to see if they can hit it, and this seat has been marked red to commemorate the landing spot of the longest home run in Fenway Park history, hit by Ted Williams, we're in row 37 out in the right field seats, and just looking out at home plate, it's a ridiculous distance from here, 502 feet. And in recent years, uh, the official distance of the home run was increased from 502 to 527 because we're actually 31 feet above field level. So if you take the distance that the ball would have kept traveling, yeah, 527. Shout out to my friend Greg Rabarchik in the Red Sox analytics department. He is one of the world's leading experts on tracking and measuring home run distances. So yeah, it's just pretty cool to sit here next to this historic spot. Um, in fact, why don't you turn around and show people just how far we are? Because like I said, it's just, it's hard to comprehend. And speaking of seats, I want to take a moment right now to give another shout out, this time to my friends over at SeatGeek because they are sponsoring this video. Now this season, SeatGeek became the official ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, so they got you covered for all of your ticketing needs. And thanks to SeatGeek, I have you covered as well because SeatGeek gave me a link that I can pass along to you guys. And when you click it, when you use it, you can save 10% on any tickets on the app, whether or not you've used it. Here comes the music, the lovely organ music. This is from SeatGeek, an incredible deal. Basically, no one else has this offer. So I hope you guys take advantage, and I'll explain in just a sec how that works. But first, for those of you guys who might need a little refresher on what SeatGeek is, well, it's an app that gathers tickets from all over the internet into one spot to make it so easy to buy them. And up here on the screen, you can see what it looks like when you're actually using the app. So what you need to know is that when you pull up the seating chart and you see all those colorful dots, you want to look for the green ones, the seats that are colored like this, because those indicate the best deals. The ones that are colored for the Ted Williams seat, eh, those are not the best deals, all right? And also SeatGeek rates every ticket from one to 10, so you can tell right away just how good of a deal you're getting. All right, now it gets even better than that because SeatGeek is the only ticketing app that lets you exchange your seats ahead of the event. 
through a feature called Swaps. So huge thumbs up for that. And as for taking advantage of this deal and saving the money, so easy, just like using the app itself. Check the description for this video, you'll find the link there. And when you click it, just do one of two things, either sign into your SeatGeek account or create an account, and those savings will be applied automatically 10% off any tickets on the app, whether or not you've used it before. You guys have to take advantage. And by the way, SeatGeek is the number one ticketing app. It's been downloaded more than 28 million times. That's a lot of times. And every day on SeatGeek, there are more than 70,000 different events. So even if you're not seeing the Red Sox, if you're not going to Fenway, it doesn't matter. If you're not seeing baseball, it doesn't matter. All other sports, you want to go see music, concerts, comedy, festivals, any time you guys are going to buy a ticket, do yourself a favor, check out SeatGeek first. Look at that. I dig it. There you go. Say hi to YouTube. Hi YouTube. Mr. Hughes. Yeah, I, uh, I got some good stuff in there. I didn't know exactly what you wanted, so I just threw it back together. We got some Tootsie Rolls. Chips Ahoy. Oh, Swedish Fish. That's the stuff right there. So, I got to run out there to the bullpen, but uh, I'll throw you one of them. So the challenge is, can I make it out to right field in the next six minutes when Dustin is going to be out there? this ball in the red seat but there are some people sitting one row right in front of it so I didn't want them to get uh, you know buzzed a little chin music you know so gave it some space Dustin right on the money so find a kid to give this to my second of the day hey, you want Here is the deal. We got about 20 minutes until game time, and I have some nice seats out at right field, similar spots where I was last night. But 
I was just over at the dugout, as you saw, and some really cool people there with amazing seats said that they have a couple extra seats, at least until about the fourth or fifth inning. And then I guess they have some friends who are going to be showing up late. And they invited me and my videographer to hang there. So it's tempting to stay in the outfield and try to catch home runs, but I just can't pass up the opportunity to be that close to the action. So back to the infield we go. underway. I'm already having so much fun. Bottom of the first, Sox are on top, one nothing. And I owe this incredible experience to these folks right here. This is Scott, who's already mocking me <laughs> because he snagged the first ball. You were saying what? It's like scoring against Michael Jordan. He said it was embarrassing that he caught it. And I said it would be embarrassing for me if I'm a guest in their seats and I caught the first ball. So that's Lisa. Alexa. Caitlin and Quinn. I think I got everybody's names. Killed So, I mean, okay, you know what? Don't be a sore winner. Oh, give me the first one. Get there. going over there. That's caught. Langoliers. Nice play. So, we're going to edit him out of the video. But yeah, this is just. I'm going back to the outfield. Wait, look at this one. This one World Series. We're tied. Uh, this one has a beautiful smudged logo. Thank you, Coach. Um, this is so, the best seat ever. I mean, this is the best seat in the coolest stadium in Major League Baseball. I'm awkwardly becoming an A's fan right now. <laughs> so, uh, we'll, we'll see what else the day brings. Now, you guys said that you had... I mean, we can we can both quote you. Yeah. <laughs> um, now you said that you do have friends coming in a few innings, right? Yes. You guys have a lot more fun, though. Oh, totally. Totally. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see how they do. Make, send them yes. to the outfield. Yes. So, uh, They're right field people. Oh, that is a
notice the people in these seats when I'm at games. And I'm always like, who the hell gets to sit? And like, I'm the answer to my own question today. It's just wild. There's a foul ball. You know, that's like two sections down that way. Thanks. <laughs> um, it's uh, bottom of the second now. Socks are up three now. And I'm on foul ball duty. It's a foul ball the wrong way. I have transitioned out to right field, top of the sixth inning now, and the Red Sox, they are dominating on top nine to one. And the view from out here, of course, is just a bit 
different from the corner spot in the front row next to the third base dugout. But you know what? I really love it out here because, as I always say, when you're in foul territory, you can't catch home runs. So probably going to chill out here for the last few innings. Might even try to move a little closer toward the A's bullpen. That's the Red Sox bullpen right here. Just because when the score is so lopsided, people often leave early, even when the home team is winning. So I'll see if I can get over a little closer to Dustin Hughes. And for right now, speaking of Dustin, well, here's one of the snacks he gave me earlier. Swedish fish, as we seem to have maybe an injury delay. So here we go. Mm. Through the first six innings of this game, the Sox scored at least one run in every inning. And then in the seventh, well, that was the first time that they got blank, but I don't think they're too concerned. Top of the eighth now, they're on top 10 to three. Meanwhile, Shintaro Fujinami is warming up in the A's bullpen, throwing to my buddy Dustin Hughes. So that's pretty fun to see. And yeah, I have in fact moved over closer to the A's bullpen as advertised. So we'll see how this thing wraps up. down the stretch in this game and that's really a shame because in the top of the ninth Cody Thomas came to bat for the A's with zero career home runs how cool would it have been if he went yard and I caught it but unfortunately he went down on strikes and this ball game ended soon after 10 to 3 that was the final the Red Sox came out on top and there was a lot of offense four home runs Alex Verdugo hit one Jaron Duran Manny Pena and Brent Rooker two for each team but most of those home runs were hit when I was still in foul territory, so I had no chance. But as for right field and as for the post game, man, Dustin Hughes tossed me yet another baseball after this thing wound down. He is truly the best, and it was cool to chat with him a bit on my way out. Not sure if I'll see Dustin again this season. I'm hoping to visit Oakland, but I don't have that trip booked quite yet. And so I'm back out here on the street to wrap this thing up for you. Seven baseballs total for me today. That's where he ended up. Not bad with no BP, right? And you guys know that I do count balls in my lifetime total that I give away. And I gave away a bunch. So my lifetime number is now 12,225. One, two, 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 five. Kind of a cool number. So, I do have to introduce slash get this guy back onto YouTube. Come over here. You've seen him before. The OGs remember, this is Jerry. So, uh, I'm actually staying with this dude in Providence. We've known each other since 2011. 2011. So, how many baseballs for you today? Uh, I got two, hooked up by the amazing Dustin Hughes. Dustin Hughes gave you both baseballs? Yeah, I'm telling you, he's the best. What's your lifetime baseball total? Uh, 73. Triple digits, right around the corner. Is it going to happen this year? No, it's going to happen next year. All right. Uh, what else? I'm driving back to New York City tonight, so this concludes my time here at Fenway. I think I will be back here, actually, for at least one more game this year. That remains to be seen. Uh, check the description for that SeatGeek link. Save money on your tickets, because if you don't, they're pretty dumb, right? Jerry knows what's up. So uh, are we going to go eat some Feliz pizza in Providence? Yeah. Got to load up before hitting the road. So, all right. Uh, say bye to the people. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, we're done. <laughs>